and told me that I was not an adult because I wasn't wearing socks in the winter time. Wow. Yeah, so I was like, that's you know, might as well just go for the throat if you're gonna. That's very close minded of them to say. Call <laughs> someone out like that. Yeah. They were like, you're not wearing socks since you're sh- you're probably freezing and you're not an adult. I was like, wow. Wow. Uh, maybe I'm just adult enough to make my own decisions without having to worry about the weather. There's that. This yeah. was also my coworker who made fun of me for having a unibrow and. Mm. So I, like I can't really take this anymore, seriously. Also, I grew my unibrow in just because of him. Ooh, and then I was like, thing. actually, this is a good fashion statement. You don't even really have a unibrow, though. Yeah, it's like, it's definitely not as intense. Like, it doesn't come no. down. Yeah. But she's still thick. She's yeah. still there. It's like um, an accent. It's subtle. Right there, but there. It's yeah. very French. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just enough to still be a fashion statement. That's what we love. Welcome back to the Sandbar, and joining me today is an old friend of mine, Helen Tafisa. She is the creator <laughs> and curator of Older and Wiser Company, and they are experts in vintage-inspired goods. I don't know if I explained that correctly, but... Um, experts is a strong word. Experts is a strong word, but, but you I know, think... I appreciate that we went for it. To me, if I were to look for vintage-inspired goods, yes. you would be the person. So, to me, you are the expert, at least. I could say that. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, Helen is joining us today to kind of not just go over her business, but to maybe inspire somebody out there that's looking to do a similar task and to also bring a message of community so helen how are you doing we're doing good man it's valentine's day just went to dinner with my mom yeah uh so i mean so far so good feeling good i'm excited to be doing this see where we end up that's good Mm -hmm. okay so i guess let's get right into it you know what what is older and wiser i mean i feel like this is always such a hard question for me to answer because it's in the middle of shifting things. Older and wiser now is um, it's definitely a collaboration of productions and products that is kind of supposed to be an outlet for creatives to come together and create sources of income. So whether it's through media production or through um, like reselling or just getting marketing for your art that you're making, whatever, Older and Wiser Co. is supposed to be a place where you can come and meet other people who will help you do that and um, create imaginative, beautiful things at the oh, same time. That's nice. Yes. I like how you, I like how you articulated that at the yes. end. Yes. Uh, so that's what we're working towards. Um, but I also, I personally, in Older and Wiser Co., sell plants sell vintage related things vintage inspired goods i guess if you want to call it um and then try and find other people who make and sell their own products to kind of team up and sell them to a new market as well that's nice that's nice it's kind of the what we're trying to get into yeah so what is i guess what inspired the the endeavor not just selling what you or doing what you're doing but also the name, you know, older and wiser is yes. kind of, it's an interesting name. You know, it's a strong yeah. statement. I mean, hopefully. I When I came up with it, I think it seemed obvious to me. So I was hoping it wouldn't seem cliche to people. But, um, I mean, I started older and wiser because I needed to pay off college tuition. Mm-hmm. And so I couldn't really make art myself like I can't draw or really paint or whatever so I knew I was going to have to reinvent something to resell it and kind of catch people's attention in that way um and then I always have had a love for vintage things I think because when I was younger my mom used to make us watch like musicals and like old movies and then our grandparents are really important people to me and I loved the lives that they lived And so I've always been inspired by vintage things because of the story they tell, but they get kind of tossed to the side and like forgotten or collected, but not really cared about. And so um, giving new life to them was something I just took literally by putting living (laughs) things, like putting living plants into old things and, um, and reselling them. And, uh, 
older and wiser just really was a play on that of old things given new life yeah. kind of learning not even more than that learning how to take older styles and like make them relevant for the modern user kind of mm -hmm. so that's where it came from um but again it's always still thinking of new ways to yeah, keep yeah. reinventing things i like that i really like i think we do forget i'm a because i'm a history nerd i think we do forget a lot of times where we not just where we come from but kind of what inspires what we have today mm -hmm. and a lot of the things a lot of the art forms a lot of the music architecture all that stuff is inspired by something that was created beforehand yeah so i think these these vintage inspired goods are kind of creating a piece using an old i guess how should i explain using an <laughs> old image almost and like you said bringing it to life with a new purpose yeah because mm -hmm. a lot of the things you use are not at all what they were used, what they were created for. Right. And yes. that, I think that's another aspect that kind of brings it all together. Yeah. So you're not just using like old pots or mm -hmm. old, you know, old things that are made to hold plants. You're using, um, I'm a customer of Older and Wiser. Yes. <laughs> and <out. laughs> we got the um, kind of, I guess it was like a, a the tea, silver teapot. Yeah, right? teapot. Yeah, mm -hmm. the silver teapot. Mm -hmm. And. I, in that time, you would have never thought to put a plant in there. Yeah. But it's a beautiful decoration now that sits in my mom's kitchen. Yes. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a, a crucial part of what you guys do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people are drawn to that anyways because I think just, like, emotionally and spiritually, people are drawn to, like, redemption of things. You know, whether it be, like, people or objects or places or whatever when something can be transformed and given new life again that's yeah. just like inspiring yeah for people, it's just you interesting know? you know mm -hmm. yeah it really really um kind of sparks curiosity mm -hmm. so, so i like to I, I think that i actually was on another episode and we talked about he they asked me what i thought the most i think it was i thought the what the most powerful emotion was and in my wow. curiosity was the first word that came to mind yeah. But, um, you know, we got into it. But, yeah, I really have been – I've been really interested in your in your business and what you guys do, not just because of what you do, but why you do it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what I want to talk about. Yes. You know, what is um, – what – how is Older and Wiser Company what you guys are now? You know, what is it that you do? How do you collaborate? Yeah. How is that – how is it that you kind of get involved with the community? Yeah. I mean – most of that started because, um, so I was trying to like think of ways to, because again, in the beginning, the main motivation was just, I have like a several thousand dollar tuition bill <laughs> at the end of every yeah, month. Yeah. So how am I going to multiply my source of income? Because too, I wasn't qualifying for grants and yeah. like scholarships that I thought I would yeah. as like a half black woman yeah. like I thought reaching for higher education yeah. they'd be like here's all of our money <laughs> and literally yeah. no one was so I was yeah. like okay how can I create a new source of income um you know just on my own I guess and so that's when I started to realize on social media how beneficial tagging other people is like how beneficial it can be when you're showing up on their page and their page and their page for sure and your your audience is just tripled you know mm. depending on how many people you're tagging yeah. so that's where that first concept of collaboration came into play of like what can i bring to the table and what can you bring to the table and like keeping it equal as much as possible um and then once i started to see the result of collaborating that's when like wheels started turning yeah, in other yeah. ways too and i started i think like you you connect dots that weren't there before of like oh my gosh community is not just some buzzword yeah. of like what Bunch sells but you start to see the benefits of real authentic relationships and how much farther willing how much farther people are willing to go when there's a relationship instead of just like a business contract yeah involved, you know yeah so Definitely started building more of a community on Instagram and literally just clicking on like related accounts yeah. and then like creeping yeah. and then like related account yeah. and then creeping again. Um, and then also once I was connected to one person, like a photographer or something, then they would recommend me to another photographer. 
Um, and people who normally wouldn't work for free, but because they buy into the vision and the dream of what you're doing, they're willing to just do more and yeah. stuff. So, um, so now, and two, even seeing like the progression of the photo shoots and like how much more quality there is now, <clears throat> even seeing that is really inspiring because it's just a testament of how much investment has gone into these relationships. And like even the shoot that we did at the theater like three weeks ago, that was just because somebody worked there and then knew me and was like, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can come use it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening? (laughs) So now I'm definitely trying to figure out how to like connect people like say that there is a photo shoot and the photographer was super cool and then in a completely different shoot there was another person who's like wardrobe or something even just making sure that they're connected and friends and like continuing the circle is so important to me I guess so um yeah so that's kind of how the whole like collaboration community stuff started happening and now it's just so addicting because yeah Yeah, i mean you definitely have this connection that you build with people that goes beyond the business like you said it's more than just a business contract yeah it's not you didn't negotiate some sort of deal you're just doing it because you want to help each other out and because you know that person is going to help you out whenever you're going to be in need of their services yeah so just like with this podcast I've had plenty of people that I'm currently working with that are doing things because they want the podcast to do well. Mm -hmm. So then I'm able to provide with them either with a platform or with the resources that like the people that I've connected with. Yeah. So graphic design, whoever, um, somebody made one, they made a piece for my podcast for my icon and I was able, I actually got them through a connection that I had Mm -hmm. and it just, it kind of comes full circle. Yeah. And as you, like, lift other people up, you naturally are going to keep rising with them. And you might not necessarily be on top, like, of the rise. But either way, you're still going, you know, somewhere past where you were before. So it just takes, I think, a lot of faith in people and in Mm. yourself to trust that, like, you don't have to be ahead to progress you don't have to be ahead to get ahead yeah like you are still going to make progress whether you're first in line or Mm -hmm. just in with everybody else you know yeah and the the i think where we get in trouble is the comparing of Mm -hmm. success Mm -hmm. where you think you should be somewhere else because you know somebody that's further ahead yeah you know even if you you had a whole collaboration with them they're still there whatever they're doing is kind of a little further along than whatever you're doing is yeah and then when you start to think about that you're like oh wow you you can go both ways you can either say i'm not doing this right Mm -hmm. i must be really bad at this or you know like they suck why aren't they helping me more yeah why you know why why aren't they kind of showing me how to do what they're doing in a better way are they deceiving me or you know whatever it is that you want to think Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day you're not the same person and you're not doing the same things so you really have to focus on either well number one like appreciating where you're at because you're probably better off than you were yesterday yeah. depending on what you're doing and if you're not you know that's a time for you to sit back and kind of collect your thoughts and see why you're not in a better position yeah. so i think either way you kind of have to i guess not just count your blessings but also put the responsibility on yourself mm-hmm. and that if we i feel like if we do that having that community feeling is going to be way easier yeah and at the last like when you're least expecting it i think is when somebody will say something that will make you realize you're doing better than you think you are yeah yeah you know (laughs) and then like for like a day you'll be feeling really good and then you'll be like what am i doing it's so many (laughs) things that i need to get in order but like there will always be some full circle moment that'll be an encouragement that you keep going you know and you always need those people to kind of bring you down you know when you're you're riding high shout out to mom yeah (laughs) You get brought down to earth, but not in a demeaning way. You know, like they just want the best for you. They want you to, you get, you can't just like haters are, I don't like using the word haters. Like it's really cliche to me, but people that I guess criticize you, mm-hmm. some of it is actually, you know, you can find value in some of that. Yeah. You know, if people aren't criticizing what you're doing, then you're probably either not doing something compelling enough to be criticized mm-hmm. or you don't have real people around you. Yeah. And I think that's important to realize as well. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, you know, this, um, 
what what was it that you you told me uh, when we were talking uh, the other day that you guys collaborate with different small businesses and you we just kind of get into that like how is it that you get your product with the other small businesses and how do they kind of help you out yeah i mean for photo shoots um so i mean photo shoots are kind of i feel like becoming more of the core of older and wiser um and the point of photo shoots is to include as many small businesses and artists locally that I can for whatever that vision is. So like one of the last ones was like a dreamland inspired shoot with like clouds and stuff. And so there was like an artist who did like a nine foot like backdrop for the whole thing. You know, I know when she brought it (laughs) in, I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) she's also one of my favorite local artists. So I was like, this is amazing. Um, but we did it at like a salon in Lancaster. So then we were connecting or cross pollinating, whatever, (laughs) um, like cities, York and Lancaster. Um, so we did it at like a salon and then we did it with, um, wardrobe from a vintage shop in York and a makeup artist who was also from York. And then just kind of like mixing things as much as possible there was like jewelry provided from another person and whatever so now usually there's like eight to ten collaborators Mm -hmm. per shoot and they either bring yeah like a skill or a product that is somehow going to be featured in the shoot um and so that is like most of the business partnership the cool part is on instagram like seeing like at that salon we did, there are people who are going to that salon now who were either in that shoot or saw that shoot and they are now like going there and getting yeah. like the services there. Um, so that is the main goal is like if you're going to let us use your salon for free yeah. for like an entire day, hopefully you'll be getting clients who in the long run will keep coming back yeah. to you to make up for the fact that you let us use your space and didn't yeah. have customers, you know. Um, and same thing with like makeup artists, you're coming and you're using your products. So hopefully in exchange for all the things you just yeah. gave up and we <laughs> wasted on this today, yeah. you know, you'll get a couple of clients for like yeah. weddings or whatever. So that's the business aspect of that. And then too, I like try to find organizations that are, that would benefit from like a cut from the sales from older and wiser too. So that is another aspect of it. Mm. If you go on, if you go on your website, um, this is a little shameless plug. They actually donate twenty percent of their sales to local educational organizations, yes. and I I found that really important because, especially during you know these times, a lot of our younger kids suffer a lot through the pandemic. They didn't, they probably liked it, you know, they <laughs> they didn't have to go to school, but right. their education suffered because we were able to get you know university students back into college we were able to get high schoolers back into high school even the middle, middle schoolers had it a little easier but you know you can't you can't send your kindergartner yeah. to to a building full of maybe potentially sick kids right. you can't yeah. send your first you know second third graders and um the i don't know i personally i don't feel as though we put enough emphasis mm-hmm. on getting those kids back in school but now we're kind of a little more integrated but yeah i really respect that you guys kind of look for not just collaborating with other businesses Mm -hmm. but collaborating with local businesses that might not even contribute to what you're doing directly so that's I think that's definitely something that we need more of yeah and I mean that was mostly inspired too by the frustration of not being able to find financial aid Mm. like when I needed it for school and I mean like I'm not going around being like your tuition's paid your tuition's paid (laughs) yeah but so it's it's more of like a symbolic type yeah, thing, like you know. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah. It's a little insert a little whatever. <laughs> but um yeah, like I I wish that I could do that, but doing this instead. And too because like right now I'm not in school for this semester. And so I'm not using it to pay off tuition, which is a big reason of why people even bought stuff in the first place cuz they wanted to support yeah. education. So taking that cut out of sales is just a way to keep that element for people and and for customers because that was really important to them too of like I want my money to be going to something, something. more than just you, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, yeah. So um and that is a really 
cool aspect of it, but it's also hard to find people to donate to. Mm. So if anybody wants to throw some to the sandbar, yeah. please yeah, feel yeah. free. If you, guys, if you guys ever have a suggestion about anything, especially when you're looking for somebody to support or something to support, and let let me know. You know, I'm gonna plug Helen later. Yeah, she's gonna be in the description and whatnot. But um, you know, yeah. let us know if there's someone or some organization that you think really needs some a little bit of extra help. Yeah, there's even like a form you can fill out on the website too that has just it's just like a basic contact form that says you know if you want to nominate an organization or something um, that you can because I'm like it's every month yeah. so yeah yeah <laughs> and I try to keep it varied and not just keep doing the same person every single time so always looking for people for for That's that awesome. too yeah That's really cool so I guess my next question would be um, where are you trying to go. Oh, where are you trying to go after, I guess, the times are a little weird right now, so you can't really do anything crazy, mm-hmm. but if you were, if you had the capacity, if you had the, the wherewithal to be able to, to move forward, mm-hmm. what would be your next kind of steps? Well, I mean, I'll say, first of all, you'd be surprised what you can still yeah, make. Yeah, that's true, that's You'd true, be surprised you know? what yeah. you can still make work. I mean, yeah. we just did a shoot that was technically like 15 collaborators involved like 15 to 18 but we shot in three different portions of a building uh, so oh so yeah, we you still were this. able yeah, to get yeah. away with it because there was only like you know five people for a room so you yeah. could still get away with stuff but um safely but <laughs> um i think i'm still even trying to figure out what it is moving forward because i am still learning even like to envision a different future because I think I definitely thought one that I wasn't super creative up until like two years ago maybe three and um I thought like if I wanted to have a job that I didn't hate that was still somehow creative that I still needed to go to college and follow a very specific plan and then make my way into like this type of industry whatever And then ironically trying to pursue college and pay for it and then realizing that maybe this isn't the right. Maybe this is what I want to do actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so now I'm even trying to, and the whole time too, everybody, I won't say everybody, but most people were like, oh, so your little like side gig, (laughs) that must be going nice. Uh, You know, and I'd be like, yeah. I can't believe people are buying things. Like, what? And in my mind, I was like, I believe this could be so much more, yeah. but I feel stupid saying that. And so, and even now, like, I still think that sometimes, like, if somebody's like, are you going back to college? And I feel like the sweat's coming on of, like, mm-hmm. I should say yes. Yeah, yeah. I should say yes, but I don't know. And so I'm trying to envision a future realistically of what I wish Older and Wiser could be. And if it was, like, no limitations like per, in a perfect world in a perfect know. world it would be like a creative company that literally was just built on like helping other creatives make money yeah doing what they love because that's why people don't do what they are innately gifted to do yeah is because you can't survive and do it at the same time no. and i'm not saying it has to be your full-time job but if there's a way to make it a part-time job that you do on the side you while you yeah you know then that's what I would love to do, one, for myself, yeah. and two, to also help other people be able to do that. So that's even why in the shop I'm experimenting all the time with, like, do you want to do a short-term collaboration? And, like, this is the percentage you get. This is the percentage I get. Let's just try it out and see what happens. Yeah. And then, two, in the production side of it, like, learning as much as I can about how do you collaborate with this, how do you coordinate this, produce this, whatever, and then teaching other people how to yeah. do it, too, because... There's just so much fear in not sharing knowledge that people yeah, have because yeah. knowledge is power or whatever, and then you want to keep all the power to yourself. But I feel like people are created to be connected, yeah. and you can't be living in fear and also succeed at the same mm. time. Or if you do, then like, you know, you're not really you'll gonna... end up like the mafia, and nobody yeah. really, <laughs> nobody really yeah. wants that. So yeah, that's what I envision even if i don't necessarily tell people that all the time mm. which i just did on a podcast so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah now everyone's but, gonna know yeah but that's that's what i see and that's like a big vision but little tiny steps are what's taken to get there like 
keeping track of your finances and other people's money. That's like an important deal. baby step, you mm-hmm. know, before you can be like, I want to make your dreams come true. It's like, yeah. well, don't mess up my money, though, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So stuff like that, or even just like coming up with the actual um, storyline for a photo shoot rather than just showing up and being like, everybody have fun and like, yeah. do your th-. like that's something that I'm trying to learn right now even because that is... I, people show up and I just want them to have fun and then I'm like I should have made a little more of a plan yeah. so um yeah or even just you know going to the wholesale places and like like physically going and buying what you need so that you can resell it and make another profit you know that's yeah. like not something you want to do after you get off work but sometimes mm. that's just what you have to do you, you know to. yeah so hopefully we'll see if that big if that big dream actually comes hey, it's true, it's definitely possible. I we just keep the head down. Personally, I believe that you are going to be a very successful businesswoman, and yes. th- it's much needed. The that idea that you have, not just for older and wiser, but just of what a business should kind of be like yeah. as far as a community and the collaborating. Mm-hmm. Because nowadays it's all work, work, work. You know, it's all you know. Go to your nine to five. Yeah. Pay your bills, and and then there's like other side where you're on Instagram and you just see a bunch of influencers or you see right. people living lavish lives yeah. always in an Airbnb, which is also not true. Right. But, uh, you know, like you got people renting three thousand dollar cars for a day just to take a picture with it. But mm. um, there, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> unfollowed immediately. Yeah. But there's that kind of there's that. Um, middle ground where you're still you have your job you have what pays the bills Mm -hmm. but then you get that freedom or kind of that safe space to be able to do what you want and in your case it's starting to become to to be your you know your job that you can kind of run with depending on how far it goes but there's there needs to be I guess older and wiser would kind of be that catalyst for someone to be like hey I can actually create something and it be used and I don't have to quit my job to do it. Yeah. You know, they're they're providing the setup. They're providing the, like, let's say they're a fashion designer, you know. They they can design all the clothes they want, but if they don't have the models, if they don't have the mm-hmm. photo shoot equipment or yeah. the, the scenery, they're not going to be able to realize what their designs can become. Mm-hmm. And you guys kind of create that platform for them. So that's really that's really cool too. You yeah, know? that's that's all another reason why I started this podcast. You're just mm-hmm. giving me, you know, a yeah, bunch of reasons. Uh, I I like I told you before. I really felt as though there was a lot of people around me that needed a platform that mm-hmm. needed to kind of find that space where they can express what they're trying to do. They can promote what they're trying to do. Yeah. And even though I'm not necessarily the the creative type, I had the lies. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had the the resources and I had the connections to get them on here yeah. and give them that space to do their thing, you know. And I think I think that's where the real value comes from when you can when you can help other people rise up, like you said before, you're gonna naturally go along with them. Yeah, and that yeah. and that too that it like feels better. Yeah, like for you, mm-hmm. like at the in the end of the day, like helping yeah. other people feels much better than getting ahead. Yeah, you know? oh for sure. So. And it's like, uh, I, I would feel so much better um, at doing this. I feel way better doing this than I do going to work. And I used to work at a gas station. I, f- I used to, you know, like help people pay for their stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel way better helping two or three people out, getting their, expressing themselves on a podcast and seeing them kind of articulate what they've yeah. been trying to say all along mm-hmm. and give them that platform than I do checking out a hundred people right. who wanted a chocolate bar. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and it's not that, you know, I needed that job for financial purposes, mm-hmm. but what I was really passionate about was what I can actually do for other people directly. Yeah. And so, when you yeah. start, I feel like pursuing those greater dreams and stuff, mm-hmm. which is funny because people, I think encourage you to do the opposite of like, you need to, to figure out like the the career the career stuff or even yeah. just like what's going to pay your bills first yeah. and then you'll have time to focus on your passions mm-hmm. and your dreams but if you it's actually switch it you get so much more done because you care about yes, accomplishing yes, those dreams yes. that you'll work your butt off to get them rather than like giving second best to you know your other stuff and i and i heard like a clip the other day of this one lady who was saying, like, don't forget to pay yourself, which a lot of people would think meaning, like, literally pay yourself, yeah, like, yeah. with money. But she was saying, when you get home from work, 
you don't clock out for the end of the day. Like you were still put into whatever your passion, your dream is. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just an hour, you can get a lot done in that hour. That's going to, to pay for like your future progress and stuff, you know? But again, just like focusing, changing that mindset to, I'm trying to accomplish my passion and my dream. So I work at the gas station so that I can do this rather than, you know, the The other way way around. around. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it and paying yourself, you know, obviously financially, but I think the, the overall message there is to just take care of yourself in general. You know, if I were if I wasn't, I guess, giving myself time and space to work on this, I wouldn't have been as happy. And I might have had more time, let's say. Like, I would have been sitting around right. doing a lot less. Looking at people yeah, with yeah. their rented cars Yeah, the looking day. at people with their rented cars and yeah. their, their Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. <laughs> even with less time, I feel much better because this is something that I'm doing for me. Yeah. You know, something that I'm doing because I'm passionate about. I'm sure you feel the same way about Older and Wiser where you have way less time after you get off work but you feel better than you would if you weren't doing anything yeah i mean yeah Yeah. my glasses prescription has definitely (laughs) worsened since like staring at a computer screen like Mm. when i get home but yeah yeah seriously though when you you take care of yourself better like when you give yourself time yeah you would uh, you probably like i got blue light lenses because i look at a screen all the time yeah and if i wasn't working on this i wouldn't need them I would, <laughs> you know and but you you're more right. you're more conscious of yourself yes and i yeah. think that's that's overall i mean it might be a little tasking on your body sure but in the future you won't be struggling so much to take care of yourself to know what's wrong with yourself because right. you've already addressed those issues during these times when you're working and you have to find a way to keep going yeah i but, mean yeah. you'll care about yourself i think more when you like when you do have something to pour yourself into mm-hmm. that was an idea birthed out of yourself you learn to value yourself more because you realize that you you are like a source of ideas and of value valuable things so yeah you'll definitely change the way that you look at things so what is i know you guys got a project coming up you got something when yes. the, when this podcast comes Loki, out, Loki, I was like, which one? Yeah. <laughs> when, <laughs> when this yes. episode comes out, you guys are gonna have something that same week. Yeah. What is what is that? So people can look out for it. Well, um, the video that I believe you're referencing um, is from our last photo shoot. Which the photos and stuff are, I guess, by the time this comes out, will have been last week. Cause mm. it's yeah okay yeah. so <laughs> so we're doing photos and a very short video clip tomorrow but when this comes out there will be a bigger video that is kind of um encap- encapsulates what we're talking about of like the change of direction in older and wiser instead of just being about plants mm-hmm. and so yeah it's kind of like we do sell plants but we <laughs> yeah, also care yeah. about like the the creative imaginative production side of things um so yeah that was by far the biggest shoot that we've done um in a theater in downtown york that's really important to the people i think who live in york the appell center the strand capital whatever you want to call it um and that was just like a crazy day we were shooting in three different sections of the theater so there's like two theaters and then a ballet studio Ooh, i feel like i know where you guys did that is that um is that by Prince Street? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Um, so there was like a, a body paint artist and like makeup and hair artist. We had like costuming from a theater and also from a vintage shop and then three mm. different photographers. Dang. It was crazy. And then we yeah. also had this wonderful theater teacher who brought in like sets and props and like wow. craziness. So all of that put together was definitely like a mind shift for me because the whole day I was walking around, I was like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we were like walking around, running, checking in, like, you good? You got what you need? No? Okay. Awesome. Cool. Whatever. And so when we got the images and like the videos back and stuff, I literally was like, this oh, is so yeah. great. I yeah. mean, probably no one else is going to cry. That's fine. But Hey, it's your thing, though. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like my little, <laughs> my little baby. Yeah. Um. So hopefully when that comes out, I hope that it's whimsical and transports people. I think we were talking about this the other day of like, I see older and wiser shoots as, you know, like when you're dreaming and you come up with these crazy yeah. things, you know, and you always, when you wake up, if it was a good dream, you wish you could bring something back with it. 
you yeah. know, when you wake up. And so um, I feel like that's what the shoots are, are like the dreams when you go to sleep. And you're like, where am I? Like yeah. Alice in Wonderland vibes, whatever. <laughs> and then when you wake up, you can actually have a piece of it because yeah. things are for sale that mm. were in that shoot yeah. or like artwork that was in that shoot you can bring into your home or something like that. So... Yeah, so hopefully when people see that, their minds just explode a little bit, yeah. and they join the fam. Hey, know? okay, that'd be we'll nice, see. yeah. Or they'll, they'll at least want to participate in shoots, because I love when I don't have to go, like, creepily message people and be like, hi, I've been following your account for a while. <laughs> and hey, can I, can I take pictures of you Can you quick? please come and do work for free? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that would be nice. Yeah. So, at the sandbar yeah send all of your inquiries I will, and then forward yeah. them to us we will definitely get that over to you guys yeah. I, the way i've seen i've imagined kind of your your like if i were to take a picture of your photo shoot i would see the the shoot and then there'd be like little little price tags on everything you know like <laughs> yes. if someone were like wow i really like this photo shoot and like you said you know they can kind of pick out pieces of the dream they like should add like a yeah. little swipe up yeah exactly mm-hmm. and they'd have like uh oh that girl's dress cost this much that guy's shoes cost this much oh i can actually get that that vintage plant for this much yes you know i can get this prop for whatever yes. and i think that's really cool because then somebody um there's a lot of aesthetics going around nowadays you know mm-hmm. people really kind of want to create a space for themselves yeah and that is basically an avenue for them to do that kind of thing. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. that's the whole point of, I mean, I think that's what the point of marketing is, is that you paint a picture that somebody wants to live in or be yeah. a part of, Ooh, you know? Yeah. And yeah. now we live, <laughs> yeah. and now we live in a culture of personal branding mm-hmm. where everybody on Instagram, like it's supposed to have an aesthetic or whatever. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I think that is it makes it even more potent of what is the story you're telling because you can't just post a picture of like an object yeah, and expect yeah. it to sell. No. Like you have to be telling some kind of story yeah. that's gonna make people stop scrolling because literally it's just like you know that's yeah. why there's always some kind of weird like shock element involved mm-hmm. with the fi- with the pictures because I'm like I have to stop have to, yeah you while you're in a, a scroll stopper a zone yes. yeah scroll stopping shoots because it's just there's there's just oversaturated yeah. you know there's there's things all over the place but i think there's people that are starting to realize that there's a lot of nothing out there mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of lamborghinis and airbnbs mm-hmm. but when they see um the way that you said it to me before that i really liked was that you said that it's pretty but it's real mm-hmm. you know it's attainable it's it's something that is relatable yeah it's not just something that looks nice it's not just something that would be great if I could do that. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it's like this is great, and I can do it. Yeah, and I can be a part of this, and I can have that thing. And I think that's that's part of the reason why you know it kind of stops people. You know why it's a scroll stopper because yeah. someone will see it, and are, creatively at least they'll be like, "Wow, like I kind of had I've had that idea before. This would be really interesting." Or they get inspired, and even like if you want to think about it from a business aspect, you're you're kind of curious because it's you know how can a business sell this thing in this way right. you know they're not marketing it well it's marketing but they're not it's not an ad for whatever they're selling it's mm-hmm. just kind of an expression of creativity mm-hmm. and it's making them money yeah so i think there there's definitely something the more i think about it the more i'm like yo this thing is popping i look at him like is there like a contract <laughs> yeah. for me to sign and you just be like my yeah. spokesperson i'm like hi yeah. direct all yeah. questions to hey. the sandbar <laughs> <laughs> yeah just you know if you want to be inspired to go right there, yeah. right also i'm like when we talked the other day i feel like i must have said way better things than what i'm saying now no because no, you're no, like no. when we were yeah. saying this the other day i'm like dang that was good <laughs> i wish i thought that right yeah, now this, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a note taker you know He's i definitely take her wow we'll yeah. talk we'll talk afterwards. yeah and i'm a words guy you know mm-hmm. i i've been when i was in middle school i would write papers next to a thesaurus there so, we go. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think we're kind of, you know, getting to that time. Is there anything else that you'd like to plug or add that you need people to know? Um, I mean, I think the only thing I would say is that, one, I mean, yeah, like if there's any way that you are looking for a connection or um, just wanting to get involved in the community in any way whether it be through art or through your business or whatever and you're just looking for a way for it to be showcased older and wiser 
Is this my camera? Yeah. <laughs> Older and wiser <laughs> is your girl. Yeah. Um, because I'm definitely learning in the whole process, too, of what it looks like to make mutually beneficial content and um, and how to keep building the community and building connections and stuff like that. So, But I think at the heart of it, too, like authenticity is the key yeah. because if you're trying to – create something just for the sake of creating it then that's not going to be interesting and it's not going to be fun for anybody um so i guess we're looking for the weird ones yeah yeah. we're working working for the the real (laughs) ones the weird ones the scroll stoppers um yeah i think you just created another like yeah category of people a little subtitle on my scroll stopper yeah my contact form (laughs) yeah (laughs) um but yeah and i'm just excited to see what happens moving forward so yeah, and shout out to you for having people on here who are just like trying to get connected. I think yeah. that's a huge appeal of what you're doing you. is that it's it's about connection and that's what people need especially right now mm. not being connected like yeah. you used to. So That's why I kind of really wanted to focus on people that uh I'm going to I want this to be a casual thing obviously. I don't want it to be just a bunch of professional people or people that are doing big things. Yeah. Like I want, I kind of want to celebrate the everyday person mm-hmm. and have that ca- casual conversation, but it does help to connect them with people that are doing something outside of whatever it is that we talk about. Yeah. And I guess I, I've become this little, like a cafe, you know, like the, sand, the sandbar is, yes. the sandbar is where people come to connect, you know? A little virtual just, cafe. Yeah, a little, little virtual space where you just... Oh my gosh, like, I shouldn't have said no yeah. to coffee. My <laughs> I feel like a total Yeah, child. no, you're good. I'll, I'll be, I, I think coffee might become a thing on this because I'm low-key addicted to coffee. Yeah, or but, just like uh, a fake mug. Yeah, just, uh, just, I'll just yeah. have it as, yep. have it as decor right there. there. Yeah, that works. That and works. When you have connection, what else yeah, do you need? What do you need? You know, you know? Wow, there it is. There <laughs> it is. You're welcome. All right. Well, um, thank you, Helen, for coming on. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's definitely. It's been a real one. Thank you guys for watching the sandbar or listening to the sandbar or reading the sandbar if I'm able to to make that happen. Yes. But um, you know, this has been another episode. Look out for older and wiser and mm. everything that they've got going on. Watch out for that video. Mm. Look at their website, you know, get a plant. Hey, if I inspired you or Helen inspired you to get something from their store, let us know. Let us know. know. And know that 20% of your sale went. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Your money is going to. It's going good places. Yes, your money is going to people's brains. Mm. That's Uh, it. That's it right there. Thank you. 